Hi, uh, welcome to another video, PyPad Mathematics. I'm Professor Lamb, and uh, we're going to do another problem. We're going to do another problem here on problem solving, and uh, this is a, a uh, you know a kind of a number theory problem solving type activity. Uh, you have students work through things like consecutive numbers, uh, the sum of consecutive numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, all the way up to n and uh, coming up with a rule. Uh, that rule can be graphical where you can do kind of a, a staircase type problem to help illustrate that. Uh, you can also um, uh, do other problems like handshake problem that illustrate that sum of consecutive numbers. You can uh, do problems where circles and uh, any uh, put a certain number of points on that circle and uh, kind of connect the dots and how many connections do you make, how many pairs do you make of, of dots uh, or dot pairs that go across the circle. Uh, number problems that illustrate that sum of consecutive numbers, uh, which is uh, it's a good number theory, kind of getting students into uh, number sense, understanding numbers, uh, things like that. Uh, so anyway, this problem or, or this video set is going to be on even numbers and what I want to do here is just uh, yeah, I'm talking to teachers of mathematics I'm talking to you you're uh, you're challenging students to go through a process of critical thinking pattern recognition working with numbers getting some sense about those numbers if you will and, and this is a good one uh, I'm using an app here it's, a, it's called number pieces a number pieces app uh, it's base 10 blocks, oftentimes just used for uh, little kids uh, in elementary classrooms, but I like to do it with consecutive numbers or some of consecutive numbers. You can do a number of things with this app. You can write on it. Um, uh, so kind of what I'll start off with is just saying, let's do, we're doing the sum of uh, in consecutive even numbers. A couple things you can do. You can have students work easier problems, two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? Ha ha, rah rah re. Uh, anyway, you got two, four, six, eight. You want to add those up, find the sum of them. Then two, four, six, eight, ten. What's the sum? Two, four, six, eight, tw ten, twelve. What's the sum there? And then see if students can come up with a pattern. You want to give students a time. Give students time to go through the process of thinking, of coming up with a way that they can solve it. Now, I oftentimes like to say you just want them to get to Dallas. Just get to Dallas. I don't care if it's the scenic route or you take a plane ride there. I want you to get to the solution, and uh, it can be the quickest or it can be the slowest way. Just get to uh, your destination. Just solve the problem, and it's that thinking that's important. Now, uh, with sums of consecutive numbers, one way you can start off with is have students see if they can recognize a pattern, see if they can see some connection in the numbers, and uh, in doing that, we want them to create like a table of values to where we have the the term, if you will, or the, um, yeah, we'll just, we'll, we'll, for lack of better, input and output. So if we're going to add up the first even number, we're going to get two. If we're going to add up the second even number, we're going to get, what's that? Oh, two plus four, which is six. Add up the the first three consecutive numbers, then that's going to give you a total of 12. Sum up the first four consecutive numbers, consecutive even numbers, uh, it'll give you a total of 20. And then the sum of the first five, add 10 more, you have 30. And then six, the first six consecutive even numbers, add 12 more and you get 42. So here's, here's a table of values. You get your students to create a table of values, and that's excellent. That is something we want students to do. Get in that practice of organizing their data in a input-output type of um, for, uh, format. Later on, higher grades, we do X and Y. Lower grades, we do input-output. We could call this the, the term or the step number and then the total. So we could go term and total. We could go term and sum. We, you can do it a number of ways. It's you. You're the teacher. Find out what works best for communicating that to students. Uh, 
the idea is to create the table of values. And now from this table of values, students can start exploring. And there's a number of uh, different kind of number theory, problem solving type strategies that are out there and many different books and things. And I speak of it from my own experience, my own concept. Uh, and you have this idea where your input's going to an output and it's increasing. So increasing mathematically, we're going to add to it. So can I add anything to my input? The same thing over and over and get that output. So 1 plus 1 gives me 2, but 2 plus 1 doesn't give me 6, so I can't really just add something. Maybe I can multiply it. 1 times 2 gives me 2. 2 times 2 gives me 4, which is not 6. 3 times 2 gives me 6, which is not 12. Well, 6 is half of it, and this is my... Students will start seeing a pattern in those numbers. They're trying out patterns in numbers, seeing what happens. Now, increasing also, getting students to understand that increasing also can be squaring it. And what happens when you square it? Well, I got 1 squared gives me uh, 1, and that's 1 less than 2. 2 squared gives me 4, and that's 2 less than 6. 3 squared gives me 9, and that's 3 less than 12. And so students can go through this process of thinking to where, well, if I square it, if I were to square it, let me undo that because my mind is going faster than my hand. If I square it, then I'm going to be the input less. And in less. Meaning, when I did 1 times 1, I got 1 squared, and then I'd need to add 1. This one was 2 squared, and then I needed to add 2. 3 squared, I needed to add 3. So students can see this pattern and start realizing, well, it's that input. I took that input and I squared it, and then I just needed to add my input, and I got the answer. Of course, later on, mathematics, we want to call that x squared plus x. And then you can later on call it x times x plus 1. And this is kind of your rule is that x times x plus 1 is the rule for the sum of n consecutive even numbers. Well, this is one way, kind of a, a brain thinking way, if, if you will, a number sense type way of going through and thinking I'm increasing. What are ways of increase? I add, I multiply, I can square. Then seeing that when I square, I, I see a pattern there where I'm just adding the number that I squared. And, oh, I can I got it. And it's that light bulb, if you will. It's that moment. you got to give students an opportunity and time to get to that moment. And that's what's important, uh, is getting students to come to that kind of understanding. Now, yay, we would ideally want every single student in our world to get it just like that, to be able to just stare at it for a very long time and come up with a solution. And uh, we're not all like that. Uh, I, I was the type of student... Uh, I mean, through graduate kind of work and, and uh, to where I'm sitting in a library for three hours staring at a problem, and yeah, okay, I ended up getting the solution. Great. Uh, that's not for everybody. That's not uh, what everybody can not just sit through. So we have to give students tools. And another tool or a tool that students could use on this one is um, kind of a, I, I like it, the reason why I did this app is you can show it geometrically. And you can give them something with their hand and they they use their hand to start modeling it well all right my first one is two so i'm going to bring i got two blocks okay and then my second one is six all right so i went first one is two the next one is six so i got here two three four, five, six. And then the next one is 12. Well, um, I, got, I got one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh my goodness, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. <laughs> And 12. Uh, so you have this idea, well, that's, this is going to take a while to put them all out there. Well, yeah, it kind of is. In problem solving and doing something kind of geometrically, 
here we are. We have a set of students, and we're going one, and then we got six, and then we got 12. What are we doing? Well, remember, with students, when you're doing it ge geometrically, you want to give them some hints, you want to give them some direction, you want to orient them towards this idea of problem solving, uh, kind of geometrically to get an algebraic rule. And so what could we do here? Uh, like how, how can we um, kind of look at this a little bit better? And what I like to tell students is since you're dealing with kind of patterns and steps, this is step one. This is step two, and this is step three. My input are going to be in those consecutive numbers. Now, later on, more problems and more challenging problems are going to have not just consecutive one, two, three type of uh, series. But uh, the idea is that you're going to have kind of this, you have one, two, three. What if our base was that input value? Let's see if we can arrange our blocks so that the base is that input value. Meaning, I have only one down here now. You see, I only have, there's just one right there. I want to make it to where I have two. So I'm going to take this block, and I want, there's a base two. Bring that one down here, bring that one down here. Oh, okay, I made a rectangle. Rectangles are good. Rectangles are something that we actually can see, and if we build a rectangle, we can actually model that multipli um, uh, with multiplication. And then this one, we need to have a base of three. Well, there's one, there's two, there's three. Uh, okay, look at there. We now have a base of three. And when I have, when I've made that base, which is going to be my input value, then I just need to look at, well, what is our height? And our height here in this case is four, in this case is three, in this case is two. Well, that height, see, the base was my input. And then the height was actually my input plus 1. So if my height is my input plus 1, let's do algebraically here, input being x, I'm going to have x base times my height times, <laughs> let me undo that, just because we're using x's. So my base times my height, which is going to be x plus 1. That's an x. And if you remember, that's exactly what we did earlier, okay, and before we erased it, and it's not there anymore. But the idea is that it's x times x plus 1. Well, I got 1 times 2 is 2, 2 times 3 is 6, 3 times 4 is 12, 4 times 5 is 20. Excellent job there. We also saw that x times x plus 1, when we multiply it in, becomes x squared plus x. Another way of looking at it with the squares and all of that, get to Dallas. I want students to get to Dallas. I've shown kind of here, here, and even thinking of here in that, in that number sense, we're looking at that one input times input plus one times one more than, that'd get great stuff. Sum of con consecutive even numbers, you can use the iPad app, number pieces, any other kind of building, block app type thing, just a writing app. The idea is to get students to think, you pose the question, let them come up with solutions, let students share the ideas, and then you come in and help show the different ways and get them down to a path. So that they remember when we're finding the sum of consecutive numbers, it's, it's x times x plus 1, and that's going to suck consecutive even numbers. Uh, so... That's, that's what I have for this uh, video. Again, uh, PyPad Mathematics. I'm Professor Lamb. I uh, hope you take this and really get some students thinking about uh, uh, mathematics. Uh, take care.